All right. Hi, it's Dr. Kim Lee from cgiclinic.com, internet awareness for your family. Uh, I've got David Huang here, a former esports player uh, who's a local Adelaidean. And so glad to have, have you here to share your story and to talk about uh, your experience as an esports professional. So, uh, David, how did you get into esports? Uh, well, this actually started when I was very young. So I've always been playing games since I was a little kid, you know, when they had those little uh, Nintendo um, console thingies. I can't yeah. remember what they're called. Super Nintendo? Super Nintendo, yeah. S S S yeah, Super Nintendo 64. Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, Mario games. Kart, yeah. Yeah, Mario Kart and all that. Yeah. Um, so I got it in from a very young age, and mm. that sort of just uh, grew more and more as I got older. And especially when I got into high school, right. um, once, you know, things got really stressful, year nine, year 10, um, workload gets higher. Um, then I was sort of looking to gaming as like a stress relief and outlet yeah. for that. And then, you know, as you build that up, you know, as Cam said before, it come, kind of becomes a habit and it comes your go-to when you're, you know, having any stress, you're having free time. You're just like, you know, what else are you going to do with your time? Yeah. I'm just going to hop on, play games for a few hours. Right. And then, you know, those few hours, um, first it starts off, you know, one, two hours, then it becomes, yep. you know, uh, three hours, four yeah. hours. And the next thing you know, you're, you're playing, pretty much spending all of your spare time right. um, playing games. Yep. Um, and then pretty much my story was, um, I, kind of, I kind of wasn't sure where I was going with my life um, yeah. after I finished high school. Right. Um, so then I sort of went into gaming and I found like- I Was, was esports pretty... a thing back when you finished high school? No, it wasn't a really big thing back then. It right. wasn't a legitimate pathway just right. because uh, there weren't really any competitions particularly for, for that sort of audience. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, as I got into second, third year uni, right. that's when they started having these games with, you know, million dollar prize pools right. um, yeah. for the top teams. And, you know, there was a huge audience. Um, they started putting streams on, like yeah. Twitch, Twitch TV. Yeah. Um, so then it became very, you know, a very prominent, um, you know, it, part of society. Part of culture. society, yeah. yeah. And it became part of the gaming community yeah. uh, for people to be watching streams yeah. when they're not playing games. Yeah. Um, so that's how they popularized, you know, 24, 24 7, never close. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I remember two years ago going to Korea and going yeah. to my first esports match, live match, people yeah. sitting around watching people play live it was so exciting. I didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. Uh, they were playing League of Legends and uh, I didn't think they would ever come to Adelaide, but this year I went to Hyperboard uh, in uh, in the old Mitsubishi plant in uh, Giga City, and you know Adelaide Crows have recently started sponsoring an esports team, and Adelaide high schools are now having competitions promoting esports, things like strategy, teamwork, and sportsmanship. Uh, so things are changing, and but you quit esports. Yeah, that's correct. Um, basically, I had a run at esports going on the professional level. So I was playing a game called uh, Dota Two, right? Um, and we actually created a team because there's five people. Um, yeah. We actually organised to um, go and actually live together physically and wow. play, commit ourselves full time to playing games. Who paid for all that? Um, that was self-funded, self -funded. completely self-funded. Yeah, right. so we saved up money. Um, we funded, you know, we rented out a house together. We lived together wow. um, and brought our own PCs over. And we were basically just focusing full-time, trying right. to make it to the top international level and you know, to play at these million-dollar tournaments. You put blood, sweat, tears, and money into it. Yeah, everything. And, and, and this this was how event. recent? Um, this was, I quit basically about three months ago. Wow. Um, and yeah, so th about three months ago, I was still a professional gamer. Yeah. I was still playing, you know, 12, minimum 12 hours a day. And then the rest of the time, I was just hours. watching, going through replays, analyzing professional players to, you know, adapt their style. Yeah. Basically studying the sport. Yeah. 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 Did you enjoy your time? Yeah, I, I did enjoy my time. But like you said, it's hard to manage and find a balance between right. playing games and also um, having a balance in life, you know, your health, your fitness. Yeah. Um, it's easy to just sit there for hours and hours because, yeah. you know, you, as you're, you're playing, you're having fun yeah. and you don't really keep track of time. Time goes by so quickly for you. You don't realize next thing you know, you're, you've been playing for five hours. It doesn't feel like five hours. Yeah. 
feels like 10 minutes to you. Yeah. So it's really so, easy to... You went from playing 12 hours a day, playing professionally, and you're, you went cold turkey? Cold turkey, complete cold, cold turkey. Cold turkey. What was yeah. that like? Uh, well, it was, I guess, I had a complete change of lifestyle. So that was what helped me. Um, I didn't I replaced, like Cam said before, replacing my old habits with new habits. Yeah. Um, so instead of playing games, I'd be, I joined the gym, I played yeah. sport, mm -hmm. uh, went out and I actually made an effort to socialize with friends right. and connect, reconnect with, you know, old friends. Yeah. Um, so, and then I was looking for a job as well, yeah. um, which I did get. So now I'm working oh, full time, great. which, which makes it a lot easier because yeah. I'm, I'm working towards a, another purpose there. Yeah. Um, but so I'm satisfying that need for competition yeah. and need for a uh, purpose by moving from the gaming right. onto other things in life. Did you have that plan set up as you were training or you, you, you made that decision and then you started planning? No. So basically I just, I came back from Perth. I spent six months in Perth full yeah. time. You moved for this. Moved for this, for yeah, this six profession. months. Right. Um, and as, when I came back, um, I basically just made the decision, you know, I, I had to make a change. You know, yeah. this wasn't working for me. Um, it wasn't healthy. Yeah. Um, I was, and you know, I wasn't getting anywhere right. in it um, because it is a very tough market, a very tough yeah. competition. You're competing with the rest of the world. Yeah. Everyone has access to internet. Everyone safe. plays games. Yeah. And there's a lot of good players out yeah. there who are playing more, like the same as you, if not more, than what you're, you know, yeah, putting in. So, so I, I watched a video today on uh, the BBC and. Uh, the person, no, what was it? It was a TED talk and the guy had tried to become a professional player and he said that because he failed, uh, for a lot of people, it's actually a pipe dream. What was, what's your thoughts on if a parent has a 12 year old in high school, spending a lot of time playing these games, sacrificing schoolwork, uh, playing with friends, meeting with family because of their dream to one day become an esports player. Should the parent crush their their child's dream? What do, what do you think? I mean, now that there's actually evidence that you you know esports is a legitimate thing, you can actually get paid and become you know make that your career. Right. Um, it's easy to use that as justification to to say that you know, you know mum and dad, you know, look at these guys, they're this they're is, making this, it. Is this, the, is, this is the pathway. Yeah, this is the pathway, yeah. and it's a legitimate pathway now. Yeah. But what people don't understand is a very, very small proportion of people make it to that level. Yeah. You know, less than 1% right. you know, of people. Yeah. And then what happens to the other 99%? All yeah. of a sudden, they're committing all their time and energy into yeah. that. Um, and it is, in, in essence, what you're saying, a pipe dream. Yeah. Um, so, so even, I mean, going through high school myself, I wanted to get into medicine and I had to get into the top 10% of all uh, TERs in the, the whole nation. Yeah. And... So what you're saying is it's easier to get into medicine than to get into become an esports player? Absolutely. Right. It is it is, yeah. Esports is very, very tough market in there. Right. Um and it's easy. I mean and, and what what figures are we looking at? Are we looking at tens of thousands of dollars, five hundred dollars here for a game, or we're we talking uh I heard that a, a guy uh with the the username KPI. Yeah. Uh he made a million dollars. He's an Aussie guy. Young guy, esports professional, our top play player, got paid a million dollars the other day for winning a tournament. Yeah, that's correct. But it's you know when you put it like that, yeah, that's a lot of money there. But um, because I knew him personally, the amount right. of time and effort he put into that before that, he spent years, you know, at least like seven or eight years before that. Not, eight years. Not yeah, just playing the game, learning the game, and not actually making anything from it. Um, and he had to commit all his time, money, and effort. You know, to move, actually move physically, move to China right. and play over so there. So he's not playing here anymore. No, no, he's not here. He's anymore. overseas. He plays over, overseas. So you, for an Aussie, for the average Aussie, even a talented Aussie, you can't really make it here in, as an esports player in Australia, or you, or you can, or it's very hard. In Australia specifically, it's very hard because there's not really any um, sort of sponsorship involved right. in this right. one yet because overseas until the adelaide crows of course of course yeah that is you know, a, had, yeah, this yeah. this is now happening you know now right. it's now a reality that right. um so you're saying it's better chances like if, you, if your kid is 12 years old right now a couple of years they could have a better chance 
Yeah, absolutely. I think in the future, esports will become a massive, massive market. Really? Massive that's, market. That's great. And, you know, it will become a big, bigger and bigger problem. And now it's already a problem. It's just not very prominent in the community. Right. Not many people are aware of it or they yeah. just, I mean, it's not really that they're not aware. They're just ignorant about it. Right. Um, now, then, as, you know, the esports community becomes bigger and bigger, yeah. then we'll start to see more and more problems arise yeah. because of that. So you spent... A lot of time you've mastered the game of Dota 2, 10,000 hour rule easily, right? Easily, yes. Five years minimum. Uh, why can't you play casually? I mean, you went cold turkey. Why was it important for you to go cold turkey? Um, basically, it's probably just the nature of my personality. I mean, um, it's either I play competitively and make it, you know, a career, yeah. or I just focus my attention on something else right. instead of playing casually. You know, I'm not that type of in-between yeah. kind of person. Yeah. Uh, so it's either all or nothing, yeah. I feel. So I'm, I switched that attention to the game esports side, you know, to other aspects of life. Yeah. And so what other sort of negative things did you notice about the esports community or esports for your life and your health? Uh, the esports, I mean, like, like I said, like you said before, it's kind of, it builds a community in there. So you feel like your friends are all on online after yeah. a while. After several years, you basically make a big friendship group um, on on the on the gaming platform itself. Yeah. Um, so that becomes sort of your network yeah. and your way of connecting with people. Um, so in that aspect, it sort of gives you a fake fake sense of reality right. that you know you're not, you're making friends yeah. and you're playing games. You're making some sort of progress in yeah. life. Yeah. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, you, you're not really progressing in life. You're just progressing on this virtual yeah. virtual world yeah. that's created, you know. So uh, you've got a really interesting question here from Owen Dodds. Hey, Owen. Uh, Owen asks, do you regret playing that much or do you look at it as part of your life that has shaped you? No, I, I definitely don't regret it looking back now. Um, it has, you know, I accept that it's a part of me. It's, some, it's a journey I had to go through um, to get to where I am now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if I was to go through again, I, I would still, you know, go through the same thing again. I would still go through my esports career. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad that I was able to get out of that cycle yeah. and be aware of, you know, yeah. um, the effects that it had on me. Yeah. Um, but I feel like if you have a balanced lifestyle yeah. and you're, you're good at it and you feel like there's potential there, then there could be a reason to pursue it. But in terms of the general population, it is a very, very hard, you know, career or market yeah. to get into to yeah. become a professional yeah. esports player. Yeah. So, what do you mean by balanced? Uh, balanced, as in, you know, tackling the other aspects of your life, friends, family. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to just sit there at your computer twelve hours a day. You know, wake up. That's the easy play. Part. It's yeah. it's so easy. I mean, you can just sit there and ignore every other aspect of your life. Yeah. Um, at least when you're playing a, a sport, say basketball, tennis, you're actually moving right. around, um, you're, you're playing the sport, yeah. um, but you're keeping fit and you're actually socializing at the same time because yeah. you'll meet other people as you're yeah. moving around. But when you're on a game, you're just sitting there in yeah. front of your computer yeah. by yourself, yeah. um, you know, you, and you think you're interacting with people. Yeah. But... So a lot of the kids that I see, they, we sit down with their parents and suggest that they should take up something like basketball or martial arts, mm. for example, but the kid may even have, be talented at those sports, but they find it boring. What would you say to the young person who finds it easy to grind online, but hard to learn skills or get better at a real sport or an, uh, a more traditional sport? Um, I feel like it's just more of finding the right sport that they enjoy. Um, you know, some people like basketball, some people like table tennis, right. some people like, you know, soccer. Yeah. And it's just about, you know, trying different things and making sure that you find the right fit for you. But let's say they've tried five different things and they're bored of all of those things or they might enjoy it, but it's not the same kind of instant hit. Yeah. Like any, yeah. I mean, what would you say to a young person? Yeah, I understand that. Well, when I started guitar, for example, yeah. Uh, I didn't like it at all. My parents made me, me do it. Mm -hmm. um, but as I got better and better at it, yep. I saw, you know, the value that it gave to me. And yep. I saw music um, suddenly becoming an important part of my life. And yep. I wanted to, as I got better and better, I wanted to play more and more on my guitar. Yep. So it's kind of like that. It's just you put 
you know, at first it might not be something that you're interested in, but as long as you put the effort in there and then, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe later on you might start to enjoy it and actually, yeah. you know. So put some of that same amount of effort and dedication to the esports into another activity to reach the next level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so you're you're officially retired now, David. What are you doing with all your time? You've got twelve hours back now. Oh yeah. Uh, and you're how old now? You're twenty. I just turned twenty. Twenty. Actually, my birthday today, so twenty-four. Oh, happy birthday, man! Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, yeah happy birthday! I didn't yeah. realize that. Uh, so happy that you could spend time with us um, tonight and and and. Uh, um, share your birthday with everyone yeah, here on Facebook Live. It's all good. I'm glad to be here. Uh, you're retired at 24. Yeah. Did you expect that? And what are you doing with all your time? No, actually. Well, I expected to go much longer than this um, in my esports career. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had to cut that short to you know pursue uh, my life and make a change to my life. Mm -hmm. um, but it's been good. Yeah, really enjoying it so far. Um, it's brought so much more time to my life. Mm -hmm. um like before i was struggling to find time in the day to just you know make dinner or eat so i, I just wouldn't even bother I'd just go out and buy junk food you know half an hour and get back back on the grind on, on computer games yeah. and you know grind my rankings but, yeah. uh, now because you have so much more time you're more relaxed um, you're more at ease with yourself and you sort of see the little things in life that make you happier. Yep. So it's like spending time with friends, family, conversations, um, and you just generally enjoy having other people around. Whereas before, when I was playing games, I didn't want anyone to disturb me. Right. Like, Don't even disturb me. Don't come yeah. near me while I'm playing yeah. games because yeah. you know, that was my, my world. That was my yeah. reality. It was a wedge between you and the people you really care yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much, David, for spending no your worries. birthday and your time here with yeah, us. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, we'll have a celebratory dessert or something after this. It's bloody hot in that, in Australia uh, <laughs> yeah, tonight, is. and I'm sweating. Uh, we will be having Cam Adair next, so everyone stay tuned. Uh, Cam, Cam Adair from GameQuitters.com, uh, a visitor from uh, America, and here to speak with us with David and myself. So really excited. St stay tuned. Thanks. Thanks. Mate.